Hi there. I am happy to announce a new version of Bulk, which is a library that I maintain. And in this version, we're going to add support for bulk labeling widgets inside of a Jupyter Notebook. And I think this is so exciting that I figured I'd make a video about it. As a quick preview, uh, one thing that this widget will allow you to do is just make a quick selection. And then you can use this selection to view something on the right hand side. So the thinking here is that each one of these points represents something with a text. And you can see the text on the right hand side here. Under the hood, I'm using embeddings and a UMAP projection to get that thing to work very nicely. But the goal of this video is to build towards a somewhat bigger demo that does something like this, but better. But before I can get there, I also have to explain a few things. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just explain the theory of what is happening. Then we're going to dive into the code a bit, and then we'll work towards a final big, nice demo. So let's talk about a technique that I really like to use. Very often, I am dealing with a new data set. This could be a data set with texts. Uh, it could be a data set with pictures or something could also be a row in the data frame, let's say. But a general technique nowadays that I can go ahead and apply is I can take that thing on the left hand side, then pass that through some sort of a encoder and get a embedding out on the other end. A library like sentence transformers comes to mind here, but there are many different techniques where a text can go in and an embedding can go out. And we tend to have these models for lots of things these days, images, audio files, and also rows in a table we can turn that into an n-dimensional array. When we do this, of course, the hope is that this encoder does a good thing in the sense that if the texts are similar in real life, that then also the embeddings are somewhat similar in terms of their distance. There are lots of details here and I'm gonna glance over all of them, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that I have some way to turn a thing into an embedding. Well, given that scenario, I can take an extra step. I can take that high dimensional array and then pass that through a dimensionality reduction technique. My favorite one is UMAP. And the whole point of this exercise is that I turn that n-dimensional array that has lots of numbers in it into just a two-dimensional array instead. There's a reason I'm using UMAP. UMAP in particular tends to be pretty good at keeping clusters intact. If some points are really close together in this high dimensional space, UMAP tends to be pretty good at keeping those points together in a low dimensional space. And that means that I can do something interesting with a plot. So, Let's say that I'll be building a scatter chart. And just to repeat myself one more time, I have a text that gets turned into an n-dimensional array and that gets turned into a two-dimensional array. And that means that in this scatter chart, if I were to have a single dot there, that that dot is a representation of the original text or image or whatever thing. And I will do this on a big data set, which means that the scatter chart is going to have lots of dots in it. Now, the thing that I've always found super interesting is that when you make a chart like this, that clusters really do tend to appear, assuming you've got a data set that's big enough. And very naturally, the thing you just wanna do is make a selection of a cluster just to see what's kind of in it. And that's also the point of the interface. The whole idea is that you're able to make a selection and then text appears on the right-hand side and the text that you see over here represents the text that is embedded over here. Hopefully this explanation gives a little bit of context, but let's now actually use the widget because that'll allow us to go a bit deeper. So as I look at this chart, I can uh, make some explorations and it seems like there's a bit of a cluster down below here. And I can certainly see an update happen on this side, but I have made a somewhat large selection over here and there's only a few examples being shown. So what I can do is I can glance at this and if I get an impression, I can hit resample and that's just gonna resample some points from over here. And this is kind of nice because it means I don't have to scroll forever. But the impression I get from looking at this is that this seems to be a cluster that's all about questions about video games. And this was social media data uh, aimed at a store in the UK, I believe. But this is what people are talking about. And apparently there's a cluster over here where people are talking about uh, Call of Duty mainly. This on its own is actually pretty neat. You are invited to visually explore these clusters and there's always this feeling that you are a human in the loop, almost like a conversation. The computer is telling you, hey, there might be clusters over here and then it can be a fun exploration to see if you can explain what those clusters do represent. However, let's now say that I actually wanna do something specifically with this selection. Well, the cool thing about this widget is that it's built upon any widget, which is a framework to build these new Jupyter widgets in. And that makes it pretty easy for me to bind things that happen in interactive land to actual code in Python. So when I scroll down, I can actually ask the widget, hey, can you show me the selected data frame? 
The selection that I made over here is something that I can get by just running a little bit of code. And that also means that if I were to change the selection, maybe I select this cluster over here, that then this selected data frame would also just update. The selection that you're seeing here is the data frame under the hood. This is also the data frame that you need to pass to this widget in order to render it. But uh, there's also other selection methods as well. So I can also just ask for the selected texts, let's say. So at this point, I hope you would agree that this is pretty useful. Uh, it's nice to have these better widgets in our notebook and it makes me feel more powerful. No need to parse data, move that into another tool. Being able to do this from a notebook really feels quite liberating. But we could wonder, um, can we maybe improve this experience? Because it's great that you're able to, uh, you know, uh, make selections and look for clusters that seem interesting. But upon reflection, one thing that dawned on me is that it might actually be nice to add a little UI element on top. The thinking is that I'm going to add a text bar over here, and that allows you to just type a thing that you uh, think might be uh, in this data set. The goal here is to use this text to update the colors that I have. But in order to be able to do that, there are two extra things that I need to pass to the widget. The first thing is the original embeddings. Remember when we had an encoder that we were able to produce our original embedding array? That's different from the 2D representation, but I need to have all those original embeddings because I'm going to be using the text over here as a query. And it's that comparison that I can use to add colors. If you are curious about this, you're certainly welcome to go ahead and check the source code. But I just want to conclude by giving a quick demo now. Um, I think there's also a couple of complaints about a website. So let's just type website in here. And then we see that there indeed seems to be a cluster at the bottom over here. And upon inspection, it does seem like we're talking about product searches, the website crashing. So yeah, uh, we are able to find a cluster that's all about websites. Um, a late delivery might also be a thing. Oh, there we go. That seems like a clear cluster. Now, what is personally interesting is that uh, it definitely seems like there's a big cluster region over here. So you might want to make a selection, right? But if I were to make a quick deselection, I also see a small cluster over here. So that might be interesting to understand. And the visual really helps here. The thing to keep in the back of your mind is that we are still, of course, dealing with embeddings. And for example, the word thanks or the word thanks with an exclamation mark might leave a slightly different vibe. Um, so you are still going to want to think a little bit about maybe prompting and like the query that you're actually going to put in here. The experience is different than a Google search, let's say, because we're not doing anything with keywords. In my experience, it helps to think about the vibe that you're looking for, or maybe an example like you might see it in the text as well. Also note that this base text explorer over here needs a encoder and it also needs some original embeddings that correspond with the rows of the original data frame. But this is actually pretty darn nice. When I think about exploring a new data set of texts, uh, this might be just the thing that I need. And I also hope that you're pretty excited about what we might be able to do in notebooks now. I think that with some extra widgets like this, we can really make notebooks a even more fun environment than it currently already is. And especially when I think about the domain of data quality, I also think it's nice to have some of these extra tools that make it more fun for you to explore your data set and to maybe label some as well. If I was interested in detecting complaints about the website, then um, if I were to build a classifier, it might make a lot of sense to just go ahead and annotate these examples first because there's a clear match there. And it's little pre-processing steps like that that uh, this tool will be very, very useful for. What is currently live right now is just this base text explorer. I'm definitely interested in exploring other tools and other techniques as well. One thing I would like to do is maybe not show the raw text here, but maybe some sort of summary. Uh, another thing I would also like to do is maybe just also have uh, images being shown here. That's also something I can consider. And there's also a fair amount of different UI elements that I can use for this first selection as well. In my mind, there really is a lot to look forward to, and I'm looking forward to spending some time maintaining this thing. So if there's any feedback, I'd love to hear it. However, before you go, I do want to acknowledge that a lot of the heavy lifting that's happening here is not really happening in my library. My library is just wiring things together. This scatter chart that you see over here, under the hood, there's a library called JS Scatter that someone uh, ported to Jupyter. To port that to Jupyter, I'm using this thing called AnyWidget, which really is a game changer if you're interested in building these things. But I should also remember that there are tools like UMAP that make this uh, clustering chart very nice, and also, of course, uh, sentence transformers. And of course, I should also maybe uh, appreciate the Jupyter maintainers. Without Jupyter, none of this would have worked as well. 
I really think it's important to give credit where credit is due, because we are building on top of an ecosystem here, and sometimes that tends to be forgotten. However, if you are interested in learning more about some of these dependencies, I am employed at a company called Probable, and in my day job, I sometimes host a podcast called Sample Space. And I have interviewed the maintainer of UMAP, as well as the maintainer of any widget. And I will make sure that there are links in the show notes for both. If you're interested to learn more, definitely check out those podcasts. I learned a lot from the maintainers, uh, and I think they're reasonably uh, inspiring people too. On that final note, though, uh, what I really hope is that you're maybe willing to give this a spin. Uh, There's a lot of fun stuff we might be able to do in data quality by doing more tools like this. And on that note, thanks for listening.